Excellent. Okay, so formerly, uh, so we are recording today. Um, and I think that if we have enough time at the end, we can have a discussion about posting it, but um, we have had a lot more interest and questions. Um, so I think it behooves us to record and have that conversation. Um, but is there anything else, Todd? So we also have a Zoom link. So we have one guest on Zoom and we have, we have guests. Um, I think if folks don't mind stating their name for attendance. Rick Murphy. Noah Perlett. Maggie Vishno. Suzanne Foley Ferguson. Jessica Sargent. Karen Shu, Trump House Liaison. Oh, Susan Stafford. We have a very full agenda today. So um, did everybody get a chance to take a look at the minutes from our last meeting on April 11th? Any changes? Move approval. Seconded? Second. All those in favor? Uh, uh, sorry, first two. Actually, it wasn't here. Okay. So four yes, one of one abstain. Four and that was Rick. Okay. Our next item is public comment. So we open the floor today for public comments. Sorry, I'm back to any any comments. Okay. Then uh, we are ready to move on to the Land Acquisition Reserve Fund. In your agenda packet, you will all see the remaining bond authorization report that is pulled for us each meeting by the town, by Norm. Um, I would like to note that the 80 Beach Ridge Road or Beaver Brook still has not been added to the commitments either even though it uh, passed both readings of town council which one was that beaver brook beaver brook or uh, in our application it was 80 beach ridge road okay. i mentioned to norm in passing that it was missing and i just said that we were hoping to correlate that but that's yeah it. yeah so that, try to get that straight away for the next does that go back to my question about whether that they actually authorize the bonds or not, because sometimes they package them all together. And so maybe Norm is reporting just the ones that are already been packaged. Right. I think yes. that's a, I think that's a safe assumption in a way. I mean, they don't bond it until we actually have something to exactly. bond. Right. Yeah. So, commitments were 424. Yeah. I'll double check, but he set this up. And the way I read it was these are the ones that have been expended through the bond. The commitments are the ones that council has approved. I see. And so, so that should be in the So it should be that number, that one oh to the one million seven hundred and yeah, seven. I think it means know, it's eight hundred and thirteen thousand nine hundred and one. Yes, that should be an eight hundred. Much would be two fifty. Two sixty. Okay. So that's just not closed on that property yet. We're not closing. So the funds haven't been spent, but they have been committed I mean, so because be they have the been assets. approved by town council. So I just want that to be reflected yep. in the, so, there's we'll already the commitment. Yeah. Well, it has been committed by the town. Okay. And it might be, yeah, we might like change the title to of commitments to make it more clear. Like, yeah, but if there's another, he, again, his words, if there's another yeah. header you want, just, Oh, just because he might be thinking, yeah, yeah he, maybe he, it he, might some, mean something to him. Yeah, whereas, he's got some accounting nomenclature yes. that he probably. So, if there's something that makes it easier for the public to understand or for this committee, then we can make that recommendation. I just wanted to highlight that because, uh, yeah, because then that's down under because now that's uh, eight, exactly, yeah. which is different than 1.07. Yeah. Okay, so are there any other questions related to the authorization report? And as I mentioned, we get that now each meeting. So um, if there are funds that are committed, funds that are spent, or funds that are reimbursed, 
that'll be then this will be on that sheet yeah the other um, thing you'll notice on there we had the conversation last meeting um yes I brought up about the land acquisition fund so i was asked i went through um norm dug through that fund does exist um it is governed and i won't try to repeat the ordinance as a planning ordinance um, that governs that and so i'm just I've just pulled it up and started reading through. So in next meeting, I'll I'll report back out clarity on how it's to be used and who who can use it. But as requested, that's the fund account. Uh, it was established in, in 2017 through the planning department, and that's the present balance available. So I will continue to read through that ordinance. Well, we we have no purview over that. That's fine, right? As of right now, with the way I read it, I think it goes to planning board, but I'll, I'll, I'm will i going to finish reading it. It was, yes. The planning board. They are the ones that established. It was it was like an impact fee. It, it came along around the same time as a, an affordable housing fee. So it's all all the languages. I started reading it on Monday. And so it's through the planning board. That would suggest that it has to, any allocation of that has to first go to the planning board. Planning board then makes a recommendation to the town council the town council actually votes to it's a, okay i will get you clarification on the process of who has authority to okay. recommend use although the land acquisition fund is actually in our um but, ordinance yes i just want to i don't yeah. want to speculate i'll yeah, clarify yeah. and then get right. your process I that not right that we actually have that in our ordinance as well that it's established that a land acquisition fund is established. I, I did not know that. Oh, yeah, it's in, it's in so the chart. It's I'll, in. I'll get the two documents together and get clarification. But we have all new staff, so there was no history. Okay, that was it. Thank you. So our next, if, does anybody have any other questions related to that? Okay. So the next item on the agenda, and we are joined by Will Abiger from the Trust for Public Land, is a presentation of the cons bleh, conservation land bond recommendations. So I'm going to make Will a co-host so he can share his screen. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Excellent. So, permission to share co-host. Yeah. Thank you so much, Todd. And will you you don't know this, but we have a very large screen at the front of our room, so we would will be able to see the presentation, the slides. Excellent. Make it to the beginning. How does that look? Looks good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jessica and uh, members of the board. It's a real pleasure to be speaking to you this morning. I very much regret that I cannot be there in person uh, and that I'm having to present virtually this morning from my office, um, but I appreciate you uh, allowing me to do that. Um, I wanted to go through a few things quickly and then hopefully leave plenty of time for a discussion. Um, just a little bit of background uh, about TPL, um, maybe to refresh your memory as much as anything else, but the meat of my uh, presentation today is talking about the program recommendations that we are presenting to your board today for continuing funding for the town of Scarborough's very successful uh, land conservation program. Uh, the Trust for Public Land, as I think you all know, is a national uh, private nonprofit land conservation organization. We've been around for about 50 years now, and um, our mission most succinctly stated is conserving land for people. Uh, we do that in a variety of different ways. Um, one of those is what we call conservation finance, which is the area that I work in, and that's working with towns like Scarborough and counties and states across the country to help create new sources of public funding for parks and conservation. Uh, and much of that work is uh, with ballot measures. Uh, since we started our conservation finance program in 1996, We've been involved in now uh, over 650 uh, successful state and local ballot measures, creating about uh, $94 billion uh, in new funding for parks and conservation. And quite a few of those have been in the great state of Maine, including uh, the previous measures uh, with the town of Scarborough and also the uh, Land for Maine's future bonds at the statewide level uh, when those have been on the ballot. Um, We've been uh, fortunate to win eight of the nine measures uh, that we've supported in Maine uh, over the years. Um, 
We, uh, over the course of our work, have developed what we call our conservation finance methodology. And these are the steps that we recommend that any community that's considering uh, dedicating funding for, for, for conservation go through. Uh, the first step is feasibility research. Um, that's really understanding what are the finance mechanisms that are available, how much funding do they generate, and uh, very importantly, what's the impact on taxpayers. Uh, we almost always do a, a public opinion survey, and we did recently complete a poll there in Scarborough. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but where we are today uh, with you is at the program recommendation. So based on what we learned in our feasibility research and from uh, the public opinion research that we did, uh, we're today bringing forward uh, recommendations to you. Um, Assuming you approve those recommendations and they go to the town board and the town board approves them, we'd then be working on uh, the actual ballot language that, that voters there in Scarborough would see if the town board refers a measure to the ballot. And if the town board decides to do that, um, then we'd be working with private citizens uh, in the community to organize a campaign to educate voters in Scarborough about the ballot measure. So right now we're at that third step, uh, program recommendations. Um, I just wanted to remind folks that <clears throat> back in March, the town board did request the Trust for Public Lands technical assistance to help you um, figure out uh, the best way to continue funding for your uh, town land conservation program there. Um, and uh, this is really the meat of our feasibility uh, research that we did in Scarborough. This is a uh, looking at, at bonds, uh, which are uh, the finance mechanism that Scarborough has used in the past, and uh, one that's very popular across the country uh, for land conservation, particularly in rapidly growing communities like Scarborough. Uh, this is basically borrowing uh, funds, uh, as Scarborough has done in the past. The uh, financial logic behind that being it's it makes more sense to get a large amount of money up front so that land can be acquired now uh, while it's less expensive rather than waiting for land prices to continue to escalate uh, as we know they are there in Scarborough. So what you see here is a variety of different bond amounts. Uh, the the uh, debt service that would be necessary to serve those bonds on an annual basis, what that translates into in terms of uh, a mill levy increase and then uh, on the far right-hand column, what that mill levy increase on an annual basis translates into for the average homeowner there in Scarborough. And we generally find that um, voters uh, in Maine and across the country are, are willing to pay around 30, maybe even $40 a year in additional uh, taxes for parks and conservation. We did conduct a public opinion survey, a poll of voters there in Scarborough. This uh, was just a couple of weeks ago in late April. Um, we ended up interviewing about 264 uh, likely November 2024 Scarborough voters. Um, the poll showed that there was uh, a majority of Scarborough voters that would support uh, continuing funding uh, for land conservation. Um, they uh, were were quite interested in things like protecting water quality and protecting the Scarborough Marsh, uh, protecting natural areas, and uh, protecting um, uh, wildlife habitat. Um, many of the things that you've accomplished uh, with your previous acquisitions and the ones you were just discussing uh, earlier, as well as really... Um, trying to protect open space in the face of the growth and development that the community is facing. Um, and uh, they're also uh, uh, quite concerned about making sure that the money is well spent, uh, as I think you've done before, and making sure that there are accountability provisions in place, just like your Parks and Conservation Land Board that reviews and advises the, the town board um, and, and just making sure that, that the money's well accounted for. So again, based on the recommendations, uh, what we learned in the poll and, and the feasibility study, our recommendation is for a general obligation bond as the town has done in the past. Again, it makes sense to have that funding up front to acquire land now while it's less expensive. Uh, the amount we're recommending uh, is about six is $6 million. So a $6 million bond, which translates to about 
three dollars a month uh, for the average homeowner in Scarborough. And then, as I mentioned, um, the purposes and uses for the fund should be preserving drinking water sources, uh, protecting uh, marsh, the marsh and wetlands that protect Scarborough from flooding and sea level rise, protecting water quality and river streams in the Scarborough Marsh, preserving natural areas, uh, preserving fish and wildlife habitat and preserving access to beaches, conserving natural resources and uh, protecting natural areas from development. In terms of accountability measures, um, we're recommending, uh, as the town has done, and as you just uh, ac actually did in your meeting here today, full public disclosure of all spending, uh, that the funds can only be used for, for conservation in Scarborough. Again, uh, that's obviously been your practice heretofore. And um, leveraging those funds, again, as you have done uh, with funds from uh, federal sources and state sources like Land for Maine's Future and, and even private funding. And we do recommend that the measure be put on the ballot in the on the November general election coming up uh, this year. So in terms of next steps, uh, depending on the action that you take uh, today, um, we're uh, anticipating possibly uh, the town council finance committee considering this at their June 13 meeting, uh, assuming at that point they feel comfortable uh, proceeding, we'd like to work with town staff and you to prepare the ballot language and resolution. And this then this would um, come to the town council for a workshop and a final vote on July the 17th. So that's uh, our recommendation. Be glad to answer any questions uh, or provide any other information we can. So thank you very much. Thank you, Will. And just make a point of clarification, these, um, this, for example, the table, uh, the general obligation bonds table here with the, the average, kind of the cost per year average, that cost is associated once the entire bond has spent, right? That is not upon voter approval. And so really these costs are sort of a phase in across, across the life of how long or ever long it takes to expend it. Correct. That's an important point, Noah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, just just like the um, the 2019 authorization we see, not all of the funds were expended in 2019. We're still spending the. We're still we're still we're still authorizing the expenditure. We're still we are still recommending that the town council uh, spend those funds for these acquisitions, and so the citizens do not pay for those bonds until they are issued. It's like a line of credit. That's, yeah. that's how I think of it as a line of credit. If I may, uh, Jessica? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so this, you're exactly right. Um, we uh, base these tax impact calculations on pretty much the worst case scenario. So it assumes that all of the bonds would be issued at once, uh, which they would not. Um, as you've done before, the bonds will be issued when you have acquisitions lined up and you're ready to spend those funds. It also assumes a 5% interest rate. You know, um, at this point, we really don't know what's gonna happen with interest rates. And it also assumes that the town tax base is not gonna increase over the 20 year term of the bond, which uh, more than likely it will. So it's, it's sort of a worst case uh, assumption uh, for that impact. In reality, the impact will likely be much less, as Jessica pointed out. And in the past, do you know, <clears throat> I know this, so this is five years, we're in five years after the 2019 referendum. Do, do you guys know, or maybe you, you guys know how long, I can't remember yet how each one, how long each of those bonds took. I guess we could look, we could look at the numbers, but this last one took five years. It was it's spent, was spent, in, well, it's not quite it's spent yet. Spent. It's not even spent yet, but okay. That's a hard metric, too, because the price of land had gone up. So, how, you know, um, what a million nine equates to in today's money are, are two different things. Yeah, you know, it's not comparable. If you were trying to estimate how long it would take to expend. Yeah. You know. and, and this would still remain active, the current one? Um, yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, we have all those steps. Yes. You well, yeah. no, this wouldn't. This isn't really a separate. This is this is just the um, the account that the town keeps, right? According to approval. So 
yes, there's eight hundred and thirteen thousand dollars left. Yeah, eight hundred and thirteen nine oh one. If these were approved, whatever we would recommend would be added to that. To what is left? This, I what is left? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I would also recommend keeping two separate. We can keep it as a cumulative total. But just so you know, you can send to make public, hey, we've completed the 2019 bond. You know? Oh, yeah, that's right. always nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, total for we things, like two okay, buckets yeah. for, for historical. Yeah. We so, do have the records for that. Yeah, yeah. We have the yeah, old yeah. Yeah. Well, and so 2019 was, 2019 was the fourth in the series, the first with being in 2000. Um, yeah. So it's not new. Right, the process. This process is not new. Right. Correct. Any other questions for Will? Well, I guess I'm new to this. So um, our voters, based well, based on the public opinion survey, will voters blanch at the figure six million? No, no, quite the, quite the opposite. We believe that that voters, based on our poll, voters will support a six million dollar bond. Uh, a strong majority, as a matter of fact. So, okay. Well, can you give us a little bit more insight into sort of the, the gradient of response? Um, you know, between two and ten million. I know you landed at six, but is it was the response uh, sort of a bell shaped curve? Or did it have um, a more wide shape? Like, what, what was the shape of sort of the distribution of responses? Yeah. So, so it's a it's an ascending curve with support ascending as the amount gets lower, which probably is not surprising to anyone. And, and as the tax impact gets lower, we tested three amounts. We tested five. We tested seven and a half, and we tested ten. Uh, we still had a majority at 10, uh, but support increased as we got to those lower amounts. And so I think that the six is about the sweet spot. Does that make sense? It does. And can you give us, are you able to share more specific information about um, what percentage at those three bins supported it? Sure. We were about at 50%. Um, at 10 million and then we went up to 55% at seven and a half million and 62% at 5 million. Okay, thank you. And Will, because the Trust for Public Land has done this across the country over 650 times, okay. you're typically looking at a threshold of, a, of voter support of over 60%, is that correct? Yeah, I mean that. Uh, there are a lot of different variables there, Jessica. But you, usually, we want to see poll results in that sixty to sixty-five percent range to have a uh, to, to think the measure is viable. So, I have a question. I don't want to like prolong this, but um, we are in the process of doing an open space plan, and I'm disappointed that Doug's not here today because one of the points that Doug brought up during our meeting was how useful it would be to have a final open space plan to coincide with a recommendation and putting this on the ballot and the bond request. And so I think one of the questions we had was, you know, is that helpful that that's happening? Is it, should we wait till we have an open space plan? Do you find that we get more support if we have an open space plan or some sort of hard plan that actually is identifying properties? I think one of the comments from a counselor this week was like, well, it would be great if there was properties we knew we were buying, where I understand it, we, you know, that takes a very long time. If today we have a property and we are like, oh, let's go to bond and get money for it. That's a very long process where I think I'm just wondering with if there's more support behind having an open space plan completed identifying specific properties that the town now actually wants to acquire or are interested in acquiring, and if that would gather more support. Well, <clears throat> I'll only say one thing, because I'm not sure if you want to just, if Will wants to be a part of this or not, but um, my experience has been, because I was on the very first open space plan, that identifying properties that the town wants is not a good idea. Right. <laughs> and that's because we've always done willing uh, sellers and willing buyers, and um, the land—you know—that's why the land trust or the uh, main farmland trust or 
or another organization who is in touch with those owners very, very specifically, you know, they can get an idea of what, um, whether those owners would like to purchase it. It creates a whole can of worms. If you start saying, oh, I want that property. I want that, pro you know, and I, well, I mean, more yes, I'm like, you want to accomplish 30 by 30. Here's your open space plan. You guys got to, I mean, what we were told yesterday is, I mean, acquire so many more percentage or how many acres of land. Right. And I don't know if it's helpful and you get more support from voters when you have hard things like that, where I feel like we're, we're, we're almost there. I, I, I honestly was pretty disappointed at, at how the open space was implemented. Mm -hmm. I felt as though it was, pe this again, my opinion, <laughs> it was piecemealed to the point where, yes, we had our piece, this Parks and Conservation Land Board, um, but there wasn't any town um, staff that sort of was focused on implementation of the open space plan. The previous plan? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we if we if we made a recommendation and we said, hey, we'd like the planning board to look at this ordinance or hey, we'd like this to happen, sometimes that those kinds of things would happen, but other times they wouldn't. And I'll just use the example of scenic roads and yes, it went into the comprehensive plan. I don't know if every time the planning board looks at it looks at um, development, whether they say, hey, can we keep this line of trees because people find this a scenic road or not? I don't know if the planning board does that because I don't ever heard that. Well, that's what I'm saying is, yeah. so I don't think the pieces of the open space plan were implemented. A lot right. of them were. Some were, this was. Um, but you would have to have different people implementing it. I think probably in the recreation department, it probably did some of that happened as well. But so yes, I think it's great to have the support and, and have the backbone, but I also think that this is a presidential year. And if you want, um, I, I don't want to wait another year for to 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 put this on the on the um, I think as long well, as the board appreciates, I think, the environment and how I I personally think everything's gonna get voted down because of the rebel and what's going on and things like that. So, you know, we have other things going on there that we're concerned about and so I just want to be realistic where I'm not saying we shouldn't go on the ballot but I am concerned because this is something that people can easily say no to because their taxes are going up so one of the and I don't I want to digress but I, I just, just you guys are the ones I want to have that conversation with to an extent because the one thing that the public I think and I brought this up I I think I brought it brought up with Jessica and I think with with the land trust it costs less for this town to purchase land than it does to allow development to just go rampant. There are hundreds of studies. There's hundreds, hundreds of academic studies we that have We spend five million here, we're gonna save 30 million there. Yep. And that's the education piece that we need to really, in, in my opinion, yep. that we need to focus on because that's we focused on that in the past. Um, so this is not wasting money. This is actually, this is leveling out tax increases is right. what this is doing. I'm sorry. I totally appreciate your concern, what, what you're raising. It's um, it's really valid. Um, my concern is that the open space plan is going to have many tools to, let's say, just focusing on the 30 by 30. And this is only one of those tools. Right. So, for example, let's say that the state and this Fish and Wildlife Service wants to increase the size of the parcels that they own. That's going to have very little implication necessarily on any finances from the town right. at all. But it's still going to help meet the goal. Um, and so I, I'm I'm really concerned that voters who don't think much about open space will say, okay, now we have this plan, and this is the only way that we're going to enact this plan. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't think that these should be linked together. Right. As just in reality, it could be that the open space plan comes back and says we need a second a second bond. That that's that's also highly likely, right? But who knows? That, yeah. that that's sort of in the future. Um, so I I would recommend that we not try to link these two things together. Okay. But maybe maybe Will could elaborate on. 
just what these kind of feasibility studies over, I, I, you already said it, I, I realize, but um, what the feasibility study all over the country say, and when, and then the success of, of, of those with voters, I guess you already said the 89% in Maine. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Jessica. Yep, I'd like to respond if I may, Jessica. Uh, Rick's gonna. Oh, okay, gonna, sure. Yeah, and, and then you will. Sorry, I know it's it's new, we're new at coordinating online, so I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry if I interrupted. So, for clarification, Karen, are you saying that you have a concern that the six million won't pass, and you think it would help the likelihood of it passing by coordinating or waiting or working with the open space plan? Is that is that what you're getting at? I think I'm more looking for your guidance on it. I've received some feedback. You know, I mean, I understand when a counselor says, "Well, I wish there was land." That's not how it works. We need the money there, ready to go when land is available. I think there's definitely an education piece that needs to come out in support of this to make people understand that this is worth it. Um, I think we're just really concerned about everything being voted down because everyone's getting their tax bill in the next couple of weeks and they're most likely going to be seeing an increase. And so I think that's the real hurt that we're dealing with at this point. And, you know, I, I think we, we literally have an expert here. That's kind of why I wanted to have the conversation briefly was to get their feedback and say, you know, and it's helpful for me. And also to say, because I've already heard from one counselor, well, why don't we wait for the open space plan? Well, I'm like, no, I discussed with the board and they gave me the feedback as to why we shouldn't wait. And it actually might cloud the issue, which actually makes more sense to me now. Thank you. And, and things like that. Um, you guys are the expert. I'm just coming from like the other, like I have a finance committee meeting tonight and I know how it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and so I, this is something that's important to me where I think you're right, though, with the turnout for a presidential election where certain things I'm like, maybe we should push that to June and wait. Um, but that, that was it. Well, yeah, so you raise an excellent point, Councilwoman Shoup, and um, many times we will ask voters if they'd be more or less likely to support a measure if they knew there was a open space plan in place. We did not do that in our poll of Scarborough voters, but I will tell you that when we do ask that question, it's um, actually kind of surprisingly not that motivating to voters. In other words, the whether there's an open space plan or not doesn't really have a lot of impact on whether or not voters will support increased funding uh, for conservation at the ballot box. That being said, as a planner, uh, you know, I think it's an excellent idea to have a plan, but planning for open space acquisition is obviously a little bit different than planning for a library or roads or other capital expenses that the town may make. Uh, because obviously if, uh, you identify specific parcels, then uh, the price of them goes up, as was pointed out in a, in a willing seller program. So it's a, it's a careful balance, uh, I, you know, I think from making sure that the money's well spent, having a plan is a good idea, but based on our experience in, and uh, in other places, it's not a determining factor in whether or not voters will support uh, additional funding for conservation. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm going out on a limb here to say that the, we don't know the exact number of acres to meet our 30 by 30 goal, but we know it's not <clears throat> small and we know the pr the price of land. This is not going to, you know, say a $6 million bond, even with match, is not going to do it. There will be additional funds needed. You know, we're not... We're not like, oh, if we just get this, we'll be done with conservation in Scarborough. Yeah. So it's not like the plan's going to come out and be like, you need four million. Exactly. <laughs> Based on estimates, what were we at? 30, 40 on today's market? I mean, it, and again, the cost of land is just going up and up and up. And it's not like we're going to, in 2030, all conservation is going to stop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never know. Might not be anything left. <laughs> well, I, I do think that that is an important point. You know, this is a moment where there are still really high quality lands for conservation available, which we can't assume will happen forever. You know, we might be adding small parcels to existing areas, you know, in the future. 
and how many more hundred acre parcels are left? And don't we want to have the ability as a town to be active in those those conversations of those last remaining high quality important conservation areas that just like Sue said, you know, they save the town money. You know, if it's yeah. if it's development versus conservation. Right. That's why when I talked about the growth and services report all the time, I keep going back to that. You know, what does it cost for a house? You know, every house that's built costs us schools, roads, traffic, that aid, you know, on and on and on and on. And so there are those costs. And when I was involved in that, what we saw is every single piece of development, um, except for open space, cost the town over 20 years. And it's... Um, you know, it's different between manufacturing versus industry versus commercial versus residential. But as we've seen, we got a residential growth uh, problem going crazy. So uh, anyway, I think that's a really important education piece. And I don't know how we get at those numbers, but I was hoping Doug was going to come here and who's <laughs> but maybe after the championship. And the open space plan does not include a cost of community services or physical impact analysis. No. So it's not like we're, it's not like if no. we waited for that, we would have that information. Right. That's that's a. Why is it that the town is hesitant to do a cost of services? Because I would have thought, uh oh, did you hear her eye <laughs> looked weird. Because the cost of services is basically, it, it tells people what you. It's what, a very great area of calculating. The cost of services we've spent substantial time on finance committee um, well there are professionals that do oh, it i'm sure there are <laughs> but, you know, why pay them and we can just do it ourselves you can yeah work 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 okay well anyway so um what's our next step are we, are we well a, i was going to ask so councilor sheep the as I understand it, the next step is for the recommendation from this board to be part of your June 13th meeting. Correct. Now, are you interested in the, well, well, the mechanism, the amount, and the timing? I didn't know if purposes was so much a part of that conversation. I think amount obviously is going to be the biggest factor. I'm, I mean, I just look at this chart and I think we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this chart. Um, I mean, obviously we want to talk about what we're doing it. Okay. So purpose is yes. purpose. Mm -hmm. I think talking oh. about what maybe obviously giving yeah. some good examples of what we've been using it for in the past. Mm -hmm. I think the conversation that we were having is helpful and I don't know if you can do it, but like maybe I don't know. Give an example of like, I mean, this is worst case scenario, but like in reality, over the last two years, the way that we've dispersed funds, it actually only impacted the homeowners this amount. I don't know if that's something we can do. I think we'd have to work with Norma. To just that. Like, give a loose concept of like, we understand we're recommending $6 million and that could be almost $40 per, but that's if we are at the max where statistically in the past, you know, we have a funding here and a funding here and homeowners have only really in, in, incurred this amount. We could work with Norm and get I, some sort of projection. I, I know. I, I just, those are the sort of things that help me. And I think it gives helpful for the finance committee to be like, again, it's just numbers to give transparency to the residents and let them really understand the impact. I'd like to add leverage to that. So, I mean, we're talking a lot about the Scarborough piece, but um, having a, t a town source of funding has leverage. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Do you have, I don't have that. Really so, do you mean do like, you remember, like instead I, of development? No. What do you so mean? If we have six million in the past, this. Andrew probably can pull it up at some point. Oh, this this in initial bond it was for you know, yeah, two million dollars no, has know. leveraged another three million dollars from different right. funding sources. So you have to commit a funding source. Uh, so when yeah. we say a property is a million dollars and we're putting five hundred thousand dollars from our fund, yeah. there or our other partners are bringing in matching. So it's not yeah. it's doubling 
you know, it's it's yeah. multiplying. Well, and again, that's that's a great way to show more. This helps bring more money into the town, actually, yes. to for this goal. So I think that would be great to have a big number there to show. And the hard part of it, not to get out of because I don't want to talk about cost, sir, but in, as far as the tax fees and there'll be a discussion for the lumber layout, is that the chart that Will had put together over that twenty year period? That's what somebody would pay over those twenty years. This year you made ten. Is the average is forty. This year maybe ten. The next year maybe fifty. Because you were actually bonding at a certain percentage, you know what I mean. So it depends on when that comes out. It's cumulative, no matter how you shake it. And we do that, have loose numbers for cost to serve. I wonder if we took a plot and said, well, if we develop this, well, it, it would cost the town this amount. Well, it just and so yeah. if we could buy it and conserve it, or we could let it be developed and it would be tentatively this much for the town. I think that would also. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm asking a lot at this for point. particular properties that has like with the Benjamin property that that was done for particular properties when they do appraisals they do that they say this is what you know how many houses we could put on there so we might be able to get our hands on some but I also was thinking are there communities in southern Maine that have recently done cost of services so we have numbers like Karen I, Martin from Sedco like if you were like we're running this exercise with finance committee I would like let's talk to her and that's part of what she does one hundred percent. Sorry, yeah. But just so I'm clear, is this something? You, would this be part of your educational plan for after the June thirteenth meeting? She seems to think. Well, I think so. The way I'm thinking about it, tell me if I'm wrong, is that there's the recommendation for the land bond amount and purposes. And how would that number that we change? would and how, what that and what that number looks like, but that wouldn't be this board calculating that number. That we norm calculating that number. Like what we would vote on is the amount rec that we're recommending and the purposes that we're recommending. Then I believe there are supporting materials that we need to pull together about why we made that recommendation. So it's not just a survey said this, it's as a board, we understand the, the, yeah. the value of supporting a land bond in this amount. It and leverage, cost of community services, water quality, you know, all of the things that we. And then maybe that's more at the finance committee. We can have a discussion of what we want the workshop to look like. And I'm going to, I'll yeah. talk to John Anderson more tonight about, I mean, how much I obviously, I want you guys to bring everything we can to support this as much as possible. Okay. Um, and so that's why I'm giving you all this because I'm like, the more you give, the more facts and stuff we can like, you know support it for finance i think maybe we don't need the extent of like all that but maybe we can start that with a workshop is say like, if we did develop the cost to serve and if we did conserve that's what this costs and that stuff right i wonder if will um in other towns the types of things that support a recommendation if you um even before you start preparing ballot language and an education campaign what are the types of things that that support your recommendations beyond a public opinion survey? Yeah, I mean, I are, think, they, are they the things we're talking about? Yeah, they're exactly the things you're talking about. Um, you know, uh, understanding what the benefits are, um, understanding what the how much matching funding you can attract from sources outside of Scarborough. Um, understanding what the uh, cost of development would be as opposed to the cost of conservation. Yeah, those are those are all really uh, strong points, and that's exactly the way other communities approach this. And any intangible, I mean, unless of course your your remit is is finance, but um, uh, keeping Scarborough Scarborough, I mean, you know, quality of life. Quality of life, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, there's no dollar value associated with it, but it's why we choose to be here. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, making, making that connection between conservation and quality of life. Um, Versus rampant. Just because it's developed. Exactly. I mean, we don't want to live in a parking lot because it pays better in taxes. <laughs> there's a balance. Right. I think the other really important factor, and and you all have been talking about this, is is just the growth and development that Scarborough is facing. So any kind of growth uh, projections you have, um, the issue of increasing property values, uh, those things are are also really important. Well, yeah, I'm land that that homes adjacent to conservation pieces are valued much higher 
that actually brings in more money for the town because they can be taxed higher, but and they sell higher and the quality of life is higher and mm -hmm. connections. So that's a whole yeah, that's a whole nother piece. Well, and then and then unchecked growth or, or development, uh, the type of uh, person or the type of family that that squeezes out. Yep. And that and that you know again connects to quality of life. Mm -hmm. you. So uh, we've got it's ten fifty. I propose that we, as a board, dis discuss uh, the amount and the per the purposes separately. So um, again, I make a motion just to move to the next stage of that conversation. Yeah. Okay, I, I move that we propose a six million dollar bond uh, for parks and conservation board. Second. Any discussion? Uh, there, oh. okay, one, one quick question: Do you think that the Do you think that a um, a homeowner would really review this differently between five and six million for that that delta is so different so small that it, they're either going to vote yes or no regardless if it's five or six million. I think regardless. Regardless. I think some. I think people are hurting and either they support this cause or not. Yeah. Five million, six million, seven million. I think. Okay. That's my initial feel. Really. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion? All of those in favor? Opposed? Five zero. Um, and Doug also sent a proxy to the so six zero. I don't know if you can do that. I don't know if we are. We can submit Doug's email probably into that. I, and okay. with and include Doug's email. And okay. um, Ra Rachel didn't comment. Um, uh, that's fine. We, that's fine. No we have enough. She to... has other things yep. going on. So. Um, okay, next purposes. Um, I think we should lead with water. They're, they're obviously a strong support for water quality protection. Um, I know that there could be, I live and have a drinking water well. I don't get my water from Sebago Lake. I don't get, you know, I'm not on the public uh, Portland Water District water. So I think preserving drinking water sources is really important because, you know, half the half the town, it, those are their, that's their wells. Um, so can I just add to that? Yeah. Um, there's been uh, quite a bit of proposals come to the planning board about development uh, west of the highway, mm -hmm. where when we've received public comment, so many of those public comments have been expressing concern explicitly about that issue okay. in itself. That this development next to my house is going to draw down the water. I will no longer have access to water from my well. That's been a, a very common concern. That's really helpful. So not just me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I I think we really highlight the water quality aspect in all of its forms, meaning drinking water, um, clean waters and clean rivers, protecting Scarborough Marsh, um, water, water, water. Um, that would be sort of my, like our, our, our top tier message. Um, and then you know, obviously related to that is protecting natural areas and wildlife habitat and natural resources and protecting from development. But I think it's important we make that water water quality connection. So one thing that <clears throat> we'll didn't discuss necessarily is sort of the messaging. Um, and I'm afraid, I mean, I don't know if we're planning on voting. Well, this is purposes this. and then there's. Yeah, and but, but yeah. So this is the purposes of the yeah. land bond yeah. funds. Yeah. Um, where I think if we added something like protecting quality of life is a little, like okay, what does that look like on a, on a parcel? So what about farms? Has far, farms did not come up in the survey? There's not too many left. Working farms? Did we test that? I don't even. Will might not be. 
Will, that's a question for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, we did, and uh, it did it. It's certainly something that's uh, of concern to Scarborough voters, but not as strongly uh, an issue as as the ones you see here. Okay. Well, it, how about some to your point about quality of life, but something for uh, land for community use or community access? Uh, oh yeah, that's actually uh, so uh, that there's a community access. community. I mean, all the these items are important, but ultimately, it's uh, lands for community access to to beaches and community. Uh, you know, yeah, it means mm -hmm. that's the beach pieces up there. Yeah. Were, were trails were trails, trails and, uh, yeah. and passive recreation tested? Yes, they were, and again, uh, it's something that that Scarborough voters care about, but not as much as they care about these these things that are listed here. So Jessica, are you trying to obtain things that will go to your formal recommendation letter to council, right? Yes. So, so they voted so, six nothing. Here's the purpose and reason why. Some of the things I think we're discussing are probably going to be delineated in the educational purpose once you yes. make it through the, the next two phases. Well, so um, what I mean by that is when I only have a copy of the 2019, there's a there's a, a paragraph and okay. it talks about the amount and for what. And so it would be the how we frame the what. This is not exclusionary. It's not that those things wouldn't happen. Gotcha. It's that, you know, what what would voters see as, um, you know, for the purposes of conservation, of, of you know, of water quality. Gotcha. It, okay. It's just that we could all write two pages on what the, <laughs> the benefits are, but, uh, you know, voters don't want to read two <laughs> pages. Yes. Todd, I see you have a notebook there. Is that the community service notebook? No, uh, this is the I mean uh, parks and conservation. Yes, as you have, notebook. I think in one of the leading pages there was language very similar to what we're getting at. There was already in there as part of the original work, original bonds. It's kind of like a mission or a vision statement, but it includes the purposes, and I think that we should not drift too far away from that. Not forget what the original intent. Are you was. thinking of the one that was on, on the actual bond language, or just the person? I think it was in the original charging instructions to the committee. Oh, the, so that would be in the back in the appendix. Yeah, okay. that's from in the executive summary. So, so, for example, to conserve water quality, in natural areas, and other natural areas is the the third item. So, what I would recommend is that we move that up to the first item. Um, say it again. To conserve water quality, natural resources, and other natural areas was in the original language. Was it? So what I'm saying is such as preserving such, drinking. Yes, that yeah. we would move that but to the first, first bullet and then give it a little yeah. more. Yeah. 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 I have such a problem with that. Yeah. My concern is we. I I know you said this is not an exclusive list, right. but we don't. It looks from the way that is reading, preserving access to beaches omits preserving access to other areas like parks, trails, and woods yeah, in natural saying. areas. Yeah. It's very, very important to me and I think to many people that we have the ability into the land trust, for example, that they incorporate access to the extent possible. Not always possible, but it certainly ought to be in one of our statements of purpose. So you would you say that preserving access beaches to and public and lands and beaches? <laughs> and open preserving yeah, access. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah. Well, beaches so in other areas. Following your, following your, I'd like to make a motion that we um, move forward this and then we can add, we can have um what's the word sorry what the parliamentary word oh, I wonder, yeah. Amend was, amendments yes we have amendments so we start with this and then we can amend it yep that, that, sure. that sure. makes sense yeah okay so i'll make that motion that we uh start with this as the recommendation seconded okay all those in favor oh wait sorry discussion sorry yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry discussion sorry to amend by abby you know what, just 
Here, here, can I give this to mm -hmm. me? Do you mind? Here, but this might help you. This is yeah. the chart right here. Oh, there my side. To provide or maintain public access. And it doesn't say specifically to beaches. Also has to allow passive or active recreation. So what I would like to do is I would like to amend that by adding the language to provide or maintain public access to allow passive or active recreation, provide easements for walking or biking trails to preserve significant historic sites, to preserve sites which can be considered part of the character of the community and to add to existing conservation of public areas. So essentially I wanna add this language to that. This is, we're not, we're not, working really on the bond language. Right, and that's sort of a, net, that's a, Will, do you have that slide of where the bond sure. language comes yeah. in in the flow? So uh, the program recommendation is to what we're talking about today, and that's the $6 million and the purposes. I think then we would work on the specific bond language okay. next, which I think- then We don't need to amend it at this point then. Because but I think, sorry. Sorry, because I think that we'll have a lot of I think for just clarification for council, though, you could make the amendment to change mm -hmm. access to resources or whatever, however you want. Access two or three words versus, versus just beaches resources. specifically, even though these are um, verified through CPL as far as it's your, your words that need to go on balance. So you can change beaches to something else if you want resources to clarify. I put natural in there, natural resources. Yeah, sure. Simple as that to get to this point. Okay. So my amendment is to change the word beaches to natural resources. So we need to have a motion on the amendment. All right. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. I second it. Okay. Any discussion? My only question is I, I was surprised that um, hunting and fishing is not mentioned in here. Hunting, uh, hunting and fishing. Providing access to places, hunting, hunting and fishing resources. Um, Perhaps, Will, did did you guys test hunting and fishing, and did you test active recreation? Uh, yes, we did, and again. Uh, almost everything uh, we tested, a, a majority of Scarborough voters, in terms of all, all of these different purposes, a majority of Scarborough voters said those were either uh, extremely very or, or very important. Um, so we did, I don't think we tested hunting specifically. We did test access for fishing um, and boating. Uh, and again, you know, you've got a, a strong majority of voters saying that that's an, a, an, a, an, a, a very important or extremely important use for the funds, but not the kind of numbers that we saw for the, the things you see listed here. So if you want to include it, I think it's, it's fine. Um, but these are the things that are most compelling to Scarborough voters. So. Fair, fair enough. I'm, I'm that's how we can we can keep it as it is, including Wix Wix amendment for now. And then when we get to the actual bonding language, we can have that competition go. Are you ready to take a vote? Okay. All those in favor of Noah's motion with Rick's amendment. <laughs> All in favor. Um Okay, uh, and I've lost my agenda here. I think that that wrap up. Sorry, Jeff, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to uh, disrupt your process, but I do think the election timing is important and maybe that's just oh, implicit, sorry. but yeah, so. Uh, sorry, thank you, Will, that's very important. And um, I think that it should be this November. Oh, we lost, no. <laughs> Um, 
Any discussion on the timing? I move to approve the accountability measures and the election timing as Sorry. proposed by TPL. I see we have to wait. <laughs> so Noah's not in the room, so I don't know. Do we have any? Well, we I just wait today. to get his. <laughs> you you are going to wait? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just let him go to the bathroom, then you have to wait. The right extension we for the party break. <laughs> <laughs> you know how good I am at minutes, so. Um, that's another discussion yeah so <laughs> just related to that so once we wrap up this conversation we're going to move into the application for funding from the Scarborough Land Trust for the Silverbrook Preserve 2 um, if so um, if okay um, so Noah while you were out there was a motion that was seconded to approve to um, approve is the wrong word <laughs> <laughs> to move forward with the accountability measures and the election timing as as on the screen and so we were waiting on you to vote so that is yes okay so any discussion all those in favor you yep. okay so i will on post will if we're good yep um i will share my screen again so thank you all for joining us and providing all of that information. I think we're going to move on to the application unless there are any additional questions. Thank you, Will. Yeah, thank, thank you, Will. Thank, Th thank you all <clears throat> so much. Um, and I look forward to hopefully visiting Scarborough and then I do this in future. I just also want to make sure you know we're available um, to work with staff or our town council or, or your board uh, going forward. So let us know how we can help. Now, just... Um... So that all you guys know, you you understand that TTL and the land trust actually provided the funding for this, um, provided the funding for this the survey. survey. Yeah, there's okay. no there were no town funds. there were no town, town funds spent used. on the on survey. The yeah. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to make that a, a point. So thank you, so land thank trust you. and TTL. Yes. <laughs> You're very welcome. We're uh, again honored to be working with uh, with Scarborough again, and look forward to continuing to work with you. So, thank you all. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, so moving on to the application for funding. Um, customarily, we have a presentation by the land trust, but <laughs> Scott went to the bathroom. Scott went to the bathroom, which does not need to be reflected in the minutes. Um, and then I also sent you, Micah did the first pass of the GIS analysis uh, for the land acquisition assessment form, which is our standard practice. Um, I think the, I just looked at that form and up top, it just- Oh yeah, that was one of, it, it's got- there are, Didn't catch it, it's got the last one yes. on there. Yes, so there are a few changes. Okay. Uh, so I consider the version from Micah to be an interim version and then it becomes final once we discuss and make any changes and i have some i have some changes um but yeah. wanted to let scott give us uh an overview of the property oh and so it is also 65 hansen road so it, it you know that so micah's form says 65 hansen road because that's the actual physical address of the Assessor's parcel, but uh, it would be across the street and therefore uh, Silver Brick Preserve too for you know people who don't speak in addresses. Mm -hmm. Which um, would you like to put up the map with the um the other one, the larger map? So just to give you a sense of location of where this property is. Um so this is it right here, highlighted in red. Uh, it's We're calling it Silver Preserve 2 for the purposes of this because we had an application um, last year for Silver Brook Preserve. And the reason we're calling this 2 is because this will be added on to um, the Silver Brook Preserve 1 as one uh, management area for us as one preserve. And if you remember, a Silver Brook Preserve, the first one was right in here. That's the 18-acre parcel, 50 Hanson Road. So we will we'll now be connecting um, those parcels together um, and including this parcel right here that we own as well, the Trapper John 
uh, parcel that would all become sort of preserved. Can you just in, gen in general, give us the roads. That's just yeah. what I'm trying to think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, this right here is Broad Turn Road. Yep. Right through here. This is Fuller Farm. This is the Nunsuch over here. And this is Hanson Road and this is Tapley Road. We're right at the corner of the town of Scarborough. So over here is Buxton and over here is Saco. Yeah. Yep. Um, and what is that, that giant green in the middle? This right here? Yeah. This is our uh, broad turn farm and preserve. Okay. The Scarborough. So all the dark green on the map is Scarborough Land Trust properties that we own currently and have conserved. So this is Broad Turn Farm. This is Fuller Farm. Um, this is the Silver Brook that that was um, that we purchased. We closed on back in January. Uh, and then the this color green right here is other conserved lands. So this one is owned by the town of Saco and the Saco Valley Land Trust. So that has been conserved. And this property up in here is, is uh, conserved through an agricultural easement with Maine Farmland Trust. So that all that property is conserved as a working farm. And I'm not sure what this one is over here, but this is also a conserved property out in I believe, Boston. Scott, is the Saco property, is that just land between our boundaries? And that, that top left-hand corner, the 12 o'clock. No, come down, sorry. The Saco property down bottom. Uh -huh. that, that top of the corner, 12 o'clock, their property. Uh -huh. What's between us and them? Is it a road? Is it a road? Is it a field space? Yeah, there's a road right here. This okay, is so there's a crossover. Yes. 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 I don't know if they're contiguous. Yeah, so there's a, there's a, a Tapley Road comes across through here and makes a curve and comes across. Uh, Hanson Road is right here, Broad Turn Road. Okay. Uh, this is 22, right? Or, yeah, 22 that runs through. The Saco Heath isn't far from that parcel, though, is it? Saco Heath would be down. Yeah. Like it is here. pretty far? It's okay. Away. It is a ways. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, so what pops out for me when I look at the map uh, that really jumps out is you can see, I mean, we've got this large extent of conserved lands that are contiguous with each other. This makes up Currently, it's a little over 800 acres of conserved land, and the property that we're looking to conserve really fits right in the middle and kind of connects a lot of that land together um, and will increase the amount of contiguous conserved lands to almost 950 acres, like 940 acres of land, which for, and it'll go across three towns. So we've got some of it is in Buxton, some of it is in Saco, and um, the majority of it would be in Scarborough. So it's, uh, just a rare opportunity for the town of Scarborough to be able to conserve a block of land like this um, that just has multiple, multiple benefits for connectivity, for wildlife, for water protection, for recreation, to be able to provide something like this for uh, the community. So uh, if you want to, um, actually, let's just, we can stay with this one. Um, so. Looking in at the property here, um, it's made up, it's 129.7 acres. So for rounding purposes, for ease of speaking, it's 130 acres that we would be protecting. So that size, and we haven't seen that size of a property um, protected in about 10 years. I think the last one we had was Pleasant Hill Preserve was approximately that size uh, of property. So this is a very rare opportunity for us to be able to uh, protect these larger habitats in one purchase, um, which we're also very excited about being able to do. It includes about 50 acres of forests, and there are 75 acres approximately of wetlands. So the wetlands are both forested wetlands as well as emergent wetlands. So emergent wetlands are like what we think of typically as a wetland where there's no trees, um, it's out in like a grassy area. Um, and both of those wetland types, both forested wetlands as well as emergent wetlands, are considered by the Fish and Wildlife Service to be decreasing across the country. So these are ones that are, are wanting, wanting to be focused on for protecting because they um, have a high, higher rate of loss. They're, they're decreasing. They're, we're losing more of them every year than we're able to either conserve or, or restore. The wetlands um, are very important, as most of you probably know. They serve dual purposes for um, one, they will absorb heavy rain 
storm impacts. So they, because the, they're able to absorb large quantities of water, it actually will reduce the effects of flooding downstream. So it's important to protect for flooding, uh, to reduce flooding, but also because it's able to absorb and hold a lot of water, um, it does it in those times of drought when we don't have a lot of rain, these wetlands slowly release the water and they actually keep streams running during those times. So if you don't have wetlands storing those, that water, the streams that are dependent upon them will could dry up in the dry season. And then that ha obviously has huge impacts for the wildlife that depend on those streams. So wetlands serve that, that purpose. They can do both reduce flooding as well as provide uh, streams to be able to, to maintain. They also act as great habitat for a lot of wildlife species. So especially for amphibians, um, one of the things that we look at is, you know, their capability for um, providing habitat and, and within the life cycle for frogs and salamanders. And I didn't put this in the application, but having walked the property, I haven't walked every square inch of the, well, the wetlands, but the, uh, the little bits that I've walked on there, uh, where I've seen the wetlands, um, there are at least two or three wetland areas that are do would be considered vernal pools. They have frog and salamander eggs in them. And I've also seen a, a, one of the wetlands has what had tadpoles in them. You know, so so they are supporting you know the base of the of the of the food web in them. Um, so so not only do we have the wetlands there, but we have the stream frontage. So we're going to be protecting Silverbrook um, along through here, as well as this one doesn't have a name that I know of, but it eventually flows right into Silverbrook over here on our broad turn farm property. And it's approximately 3,200 feet of frontage along those streams. You can see this one is really your, the headwaters of this stream is within the property and the headwaters of Silverbrook are not far away. So we're really at the top of the watershed for these, for these, uh, for, for these uh, streams, which is a very important areas to protect because obviously everything goes downstream from there. So if you can protect so much upstream, you're really protecting everything going downstream, downstream from there. And within these streams, the uh, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife has identified that they do have wild brook trout in them. Um, they also have other fish populations like American eel, black-nosed dace, golden shiner, lake chub, and white sucker. And IFNW has, uh, has says that uh, brook trout are incredibly resilient in their undisturbed habitats. So really keeping this property undisturbed is going to really benefit the silver, the, the wild brook trout that are in the stream. The uplands of the property are also very crucial to protect because um, all those organisms like the amphibians that are living within the wetlands that depend on those wetlands for part of their life cycle, part of their life cycle is also coming out of the wet areas and going into the drier areas around it. So if you don't have the drier areas surrounding those wetlands, um, you're not really able to fully protect those amphibians. And, and there's been studies shown that, you know, you just protect a small amount of wetland and eventually those wetlands can die. Like the, wild, the wildlife in them will, will, uh, will die off because they don't have the upland areas to support the full life cycle of those. Of those, those. The uplands are also supporting other species such as deer and turkey. And 33 acres of the property have been identified by fisher, fisheries and wildlife. Um, as deer wintering habitat. So these are areas that are critical for deer in order to be able to survive winters. They need certain types of habitat that ensure that they'll be able to make it through the winter. And 33 acres on this property has been identified as being crucial for the deer uh, as deer wintering habitat. The Maine Natural Areas Program has also um, identified that the entire property is part of the Greater Maine New England Cottontail Focal Area. So New England cottontail, as you may know, is uh, considered endangered in Maine. And um, they, IFNW has released New England cottontail in Scarborough. And we also are working with the Fish and Wildlife Service on our Pleasant Hill Preserve property uh, to create habitat 
for potentially um, maybe a reintroduction of New England Cottontail in the future. And IFW has considered considers this property um, excellent habitat uh, for New England Cottontail. So there could be a point in the future where we work with IFW Fish and Wildlife Service um, to reintroduce New England Cottontail on the property. It also, on Broad Turn Farm and Preserve, there was a study a few years ago on the different types of bats that utilize the property. And that survey identified the main endangered little brown bat as using Broad Turn Farm and Preserve. And bats are known to use large areas for habitat. They don't just stay in smaller areas, but they can um, roam across a wide range. And so it's, yeah. it's very possible, very likely that they're using this property as well for their habitat. And Nature's Network, which is a coalition led by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, has identified 30 acres of the property as core habitat for imperiled species. Uh, and they consider the property excellent, having excellent habitat for the main threatened species, the spotted turtle. The main natural areas program has also identified 100% of the property as having geophysical settings that are underrepresented in the Northeast. So there's and ge what a geophysical setting is, is they look at the combination of soils, geology, and elevation that are on site. And if they get certain, if they get certain those certain characteristics, they have actually proven that those certain <laughs> characteristics are key drivers for biodiversity. So having 100 percent of this property, having this, these geophysical settings is ensuring that or, or identifying that this property is a, is a key driver for biodiversity. Um, so if we want to continue with biodiversity within the town, this is going to, this property would, would um, support that. It falls into the town of Scarborough's comprehensive plan that, that identifies the importance of our open space lands. Um, that significant natural resources, agricultural land and open space should be protected and an interconnected network of open space um, developed or feasible. So this, I think, goes right into that, um, the comprehensive plan and the goals for that plan, as well as it will um, help with the 30 by 30 goal that the town has. So we would be providing public access, uh, recreational opportunities. We'll be putting trails in. These trails would connect to trails that we're expanding within Broad Turn Farm. Um, so we're going to have quite a network probably between Broad Turn Farm and the trails on this property, um, we, would, we would be able to establish somewhere over five miles of trails for folks to be able to access. And we're also, it would be, be making this available for fishing. Uh, there, you know, there's brook trout um, available as well as hunting. This would be available for our property. And then uh, finally, we would, we would be utilizing this property for educational programs bringing school children out there, identifying, uh, bringing awareness to Silver Brook, bringing a wealth of awareness to the wetlands and the values of forests um, that surround, and um, you know, understanding how this will, um, all, all the properties role in mitigating the impacts of climate change. And that's, that's what I have. So any questions? Can you go over the budget? Are, oh, there yes, any, are there any matching funds? Yes. I'm sorry. So um, you want to, you want oh, to put up the pictures That's first, okay. um, Todd? Well, I'll just show you some pictures. Okay. So here's pictures of the property. Um, this is some of the emergent wetland in here. Um, you can see some wetlands that are abutting the forest. So this is great to have that diversity right there that it provides for um, diversity of habitat. helps to provide for diversity of wildlife on the property. There's some more wetland pictures here next to the forest. Uh, here's Silver Brook. Um, different shots of solar work coming through. Um, this is the headwaters of that unnamed stream. So you can see it's a smaller area, but it's form it's forming back in here and, and becoming a larger stream. There are areas that um, old wood roads that are throughout the property that would be available for us to uh, utilize for trails, um, cross country skiing, hiking, um, all different types, snowshoeing, other types. Uh, and then just some some of the thickets in the property that might be suitable for a new England cocktail reintroduction. Of. And uh, then just, you know, there's a large, large areas of, of mature forests. There's grassland areas that will 
provide habitat for you know different types of bird species as well as all the other wildlife that utilizes grasslands. And yeah. Can you just um, explain what the geophysical, when, when you say geophysical, is it because the emergent wetlands and the forested wetlands are rare? Or it, what other geological, what do they mean by they're, geophysical? Yeah. So they're looking at soils, okay, soil. geology, and elevation. Soils, geology, and elevation. Okay. Yes. And when you have a certain combination, they look at the combination of those three things, and if they identify that as being, um, in a, you know, if they're, if they're together in a certain arrangement, then they actually will provide, and it's proven that they provide key drivers for biodiversity. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so the budget, we go into that. All right, so um, we recently had an appraisal done on the property. So for the 130 acre parcel, um, it came out to be $1.45 million. You can see some of the other project costs that we have for the appraisal. We're going to be doing an environmental review as part of the process. Um, we've got legal fees, closing costs, um, the stewardship fund that we would need to create in order to be able to not only create the trails, but maintain them as well as um, removal of any invasive species and other stewardship functions that we do in order to make, make sure that this property thrives in perpetuity because we will own this and manage this for, and then there's some other uh, staff costs there as well. As far as the breakdown, um, we the, the Scarborough Land Trust, we're we're looking to be responsible for a little over half the cost of the property, and we're requesting from the town um, a little under half of the cost. So we come up with a total project cost of one point six one five. Uh, we're asking the town from the land bond for eight hundred thousand to help us support us in purchasing that property. We are applying to lands for Maine's future for a significant amount of the cost of the property. So we'd be bringing state money into Scarborough to help support this purchase. Um, and that application is under review right now. We'll be finding out the results very soon, whether we are awarded that application. And is then that, we is that listed to, in here? And then we would be looking to raise the additional funding from individual donations as well as businesses and yeah. that. So this aligns yeah. 50, you know, asking about 50% yeah. from the land bond um, aligns with the other large properties that we've done in Scarborough. It's actually a lot less, like the last one that we did with Pleasant Hill Preserve. Um, the town contributed closer to 80% of the project costs, so um, this is far reduced from that, asking 50% of uh, the project costs. And that, I'm sorry, which property were you comparing it? Pleasant Hill Preserve? Pleasant. Yeah, they, they, the, the town funded about 80% of that, of those project costs. Is that the largest that the town had ever funded? As far as my, I know. Benjamin? Yeah. Yeah. As far as percentages, I think it was also um, the largest, but like Broadburn Farm and Fuller Farm, it was closer into the 50%. Yeah. You know, it's in, in that range as well. Noah? Uh, so I have a couple of questions for you. Um, first was a favorable question. Um, so the other documents clearly show this as uh, 129 and a half acres. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I'm reading this GIS data from Mike, he has it at 127.49. Correct. So there was a discrepancy between the tax map acreage and the survey acreage. So the parcel 65 Hanson Road right now as it stands, um, my understanding is has a survey uh, size of like 100 and I think it's like 146 or 147 acres versus what Micah has in the tax maps shows that same parcel as 127.9. So I think he was looking at the tax map parcel amount, um, not looking at the amount that I put in the application. So now you're confused with that. You just gave a third number. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so the the current 65 Hanson Road, as it stands right now, is my understanding is 100 and like 4,647 acres. It has a house on it. Um, what we've done, we've been working with the landowner over the last year. We've completed a survey the of the property, 
and they have carved off about 17 acres that they would like to retain. So they're going to be retaining on the property as well as a couple of other lots uh, for their use. And then um, and then we would be purchasing the remaining balance, which is 129.7. So we have a survey right now that shows the parcel that we're purchasing at 129.7 acres. Okay, okay great. So then um, my second question is actually is about the budget. And there's two, I, I looked at this pretty carefully, and, and um, two points I wanted to ask you about relative to your, your particularly your stewardship budget. Mm -hmm. um, the first is, the parcel has current grasslands that will need to, well, are, are you going to manage those grasslands? And if so, how are you going to manage them? Both technically and financially. Right. So um, part of the, Part of the property, so there's a number of different areas of grasslands that you, as you can see uh, on the map, some of they're, they're like little separated kind of areas. Um, some of the smaller areas that are kind of separated off to the side, um, at this point, we would just be, we would be probably not managing them for grassland. It would probably just be growing back. Um, but, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to have a discussion, a further discussion with them. Like, you know, do it, what are, you know, we would be creating a management plan for this property. Uh, once we've purchased it, we would have a management plan in place that would identify all those areas and what we, how we would go about managing it. But I, I see at this point, probably some of those areas are just too small and kind of isolated to be managing as grassland to try to cut them to turn them or whatever we would do. But there is a larger section that is currently being paid um, and that we would continue to have paid or manage as grassland. So in order to manage it, you have to continue to cut it. So we would continue to cut that area. Um, and similar to what we do on Forward Farm Preserve, where we cut the, 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 the grassland area in the front near the road, and we manage those for like bottle links and Eastern Meadowlark. So we'd be doing the same thing here. We'd be actively managing those areas to create habitat for those type of species. <laughs> Okay, um, and you have at least currently a resource to do that. Um, yes, I mean we 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 engage local um, you know farmers who have the ability to pay properties. So that's what we've done in the past. We would love to do that in the future. Yeah. Okay. And so my my second question on management is um, I mean how exciting is it for even the mention of five miles of trails to be added. Even that, um, that that's fantastic, but that is an enormous amount of sweat equity to do that and to maintain it. I'm concerned that you've under budgeted for doing that because if you're going to be building trails, you can't only include the budget for the trail on the parcel. You have to add the trails to get to the parcel if there, if it's a it needs to be the, the whole process. And so I'm, I'm nervous that you are undershooting the true cost of, of doing that on here. Uh, yeah, I mean, typically, like we we have a formula that we use, and this is definitely lower than the formula. We thought that maybe there might be some savings in the, the, the large size of the property. Um, we're also looking at how much we think we can fundraise for stewardship for the property. Um, and we would want to we would be continuing to fundraise over the years you know we this would get us started so we'd be able to get our management plan established get those trails established um start working on those things in the first few years that we look to do and then hopefully we'd be able to fundraise you know throughout the years to continue to replenish the stewardship fund so it doesn't go to and i just add that um, typically a lot of the large capital costs that come out of this stewardship fund, um, there are specific grant applications to RTP or uh, to the grant bond. And so you know, that initial big slug um, would be fundraised separately outside of the stewardship fund. So this is leveraging money? And Everything you do leverages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yes. Yeah, you don't need to sell it, but yes. <laughs> and if, if you're doing any management for New England Cottontail, there's also federal and state funds for 
for yes. that to leverage for that yeah, as we, well, right? We were able to get a grant from Natural Resources Conservation Service, which is a federal program, right? For the work that we're doing at Pleasant Hill that right. helps to pay for, um, and that's a matching program. So we will we do have to provide match funds for that, but they do give us money to. And they might want you to keep those little grassy areas. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be part of my management plan. Yeah. And, and uh, when yeah. we talk with Fish and Wildlife Service and IFNW, yeah. um, you know, that all comes that all comes together. So, so this is. Um, so, do you have a, a set? Do you uh, typically have a stewardship fund? For, is this based on what you do with your other properties? Yes. For ma maintenance. Yes. So this projection is. Yes, I mean we it, so so specifically for stewardship we do we we are it is reduced a little bit from what we would typically do for our formula, um, but otherwise yes I mean this is what we do we these project costs are standard for all of our projects these are the it's the cost of of being able to conserve land um, the ability and to maintain to do it and maintain it yes the ability to do it yes I, I just can't wrap my head around why you're undershooting your. The budget. I feel like this is an unrealistic budget. I mean, there's a max of that town can fund anywhere, and I, and from a uh, from a, a justification standpoint, we we want to know what that match is, and I feel like you're not being realistic. Probably, you just said yourself. You just said it's it's lower. Mm -hmm. I don't. What's the value? Why are you giving a lower number? That's not that's not the real. From stewardship yeah. specifically. Well, um, I mean, uh, I'm, we're thinking, number one, that there might be some economies of scale savings um, with the being a larger property. Um, and, you know, because, for instance, like if, you know, like if we have to put in a parking lot on one property versus this property is still only one, that's one cost, but we're spreading it out over 129 acres versus uh, 30 acres, right? So there might be some savings there. Um, and then also just looking at our ability to fundraise. I mean, if we if if we go through the process, so we're gonna, you know, it's gonna so this whole process, you know, is going to still take some time before we close. Um, so we we're gonna be fundraising with our donors and businesses throughout that time. If we feel like at that point that we have the capacity to be able to fundraise more than that for stewardship, then by all means we're gonna do it because again, I mean, like what you're saying, this is something that we're going to own in perpetuity and we need to make sure that we've got the money to do that with. Um, so if we feel like we can go higher, then we would. Um, can I just, the... wait, can I jump in? We're just to be respectful of time. If we have a hard stop at noon, we need to move on. Yep. I mean, yep. if anything, they're being conservative and the match would be higher. So I yep. don't think we need to debate okay. that further. Can we move yep. on to the assessment form? Yep. Um, Todd, can you pull up the yep. assessment form? So oh, the, the first thing I one more question, sorry. You can while we're doing the form if it's specific to an item. <laughs> Is it? Well, we have. I don't, okay, okay, okay. I just wondered if we the appraisal. Heard. I just it's a question about the appraisal. Okay. We can ask about that later during here. this last one. All right, let's crack go. that whip. We got twenty minutes. Let's go. All right, let's go. Well, we all know we can talk. Um, so we need to change 91 Burnham Road to 65 Hanson Road. Yes. The first change I have is related to 1-2, which is the parcel includes rare, significant, or endangered species habitat. I heard that we have a special biological uh, significance with the New England cottontail reinjection possibility, the geological significance, and vernal pools. So I would say at minimum 30 points because it's 10 points per feature. But I don't know if other folks heard additional features. That's what Sue and I were poking each other about. This is number two or number three? Number three. Number three. Oh, number three. Sorry. Number three. We skipped number two. We shouldn't because. We Sorry, I didn't mean to. We gave points to the Silverbrook Preserve for number two. Um, because of the little brown dot connectivity to um, Broad Turn Farm. And this is the same. So what are you plus saying? spotted turtle, plus possible. Right? That's cotton. New England cotton so, so, yes, I would say 100%. Yeah. And then what's that acreage? Would it be one the point percentage of acreage? 50 points. 50 points. 50 points. 
So I'm going to put in this just so I don't. I think they have 129 here, and our max is 50. 127.49, right? Which is 127. 127. Yeah. And I can't believe and 50. Is, I can't believe any of this isn't in the floodplain. No, it's not identified in the floodplain. Um, it does. Uh, there is like a stream buffer around yeah. Silver Brook, but it's not. That's not. It's not considered. It's, it's not, not been identified. Right okay. From my understanding, it hasn't been identified identified by FEMA as a floodplain for their insurance rate okay. maps. So now we're on. So sorry, I didn't mean to skip two. So three, I would say that there are three areas, three features that would get points, and those are the co new and cottontail habitat, the for special biological, the geological significance, and vernal pools, which would be 30 points. But again, I didn't know if anybody heard other features that should be awarded points, or if anyone disagreed with the 30, the three features. Any peat bogs on there? Uh, I, I can't, uh, I can't identify that, okay. that specific thing. I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, in, to be frank, the Newman Cotton Dog conversation is a little bit of a fairy tale, um, but that's that's fine. So it should be 20 then? No, it's fine. It, I mean, it, if it's a conversation that's been had with you, so she wants with uh, Maine and if she wants a lot of Maine and issues and wildlife, then let's include it. Um, that's fine. Did anyone have any changes to four? It was, well, it's a maximum of 50 points. Anyway. anyway, and it, right. yeah, uh, five, five, no start well in marsh, six, wildlife corridors. Yeah, I wondered about that. That's absolutely 25 points. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's part of the fundamental basis of this part, property. I agree. How close is the nearest sand and gravel aquifer, do you know? I want to say that there's one um, out in Buxton. I think there's something yeah. out there, but I, I'd have to look it up. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to speak. So seven maintains the same. Moving on to linkages, buffers, and additions to conservation lands. I uh, will say I didn't understand why it wasn't getting 50 points for the size. I think that might just be a miscalculation because it is greater than 100 acres. So it shouldn't be 20. It should be 50. Yeah, that's put in there manually, so it did not fill. Okay. So it should be 50. It should, it should be 50. Be 50. You might have entered it in auto fill. And then shape, I think, well, Doug's not here, but uh, because of the cutouts, I think it doesn't get that perimeter area, area score. Um, three, I don't sorry. think that's the real spirit of, of the, the, sh the shape, absolutely, yes. is functional from the principles of conservation biology. Yeah. Um, but I think it's okay. We don't need to hash it out. Um, I think it does create a link between public or protected parcels totaling at least 20 acres. So I think that should be 50. I think it say should be yes, and it should be 50 because it's greater than 100 acres. Okay. Uh, and then link between trails. Adding on. This is the challenge. Of, there's no current trails in the Silverbrook Preserve, the other one, right? Correct. So there's trails on Broad Turn. It's Broad Turn that it connects with. Right? Correct. Yeah, we would connect them to Broad Turn. So I guess I'm not sure about the calculation. Is there 500? Well, has the GIS added the trails, existing trails in right now? Because he's got 500 in there, and maybe that is that the trails on? Uh, broad term, maybe that 500. I would have to clarify that with him as far as his calculation, yeah. But you see where it's it says 500, yeah. yeah. So he probably measured with GIS what's existing, but 500 I just didn't know if he made some changes, yeah. 
So I don't have enough information to recommend a change there. Approximately three miles of trails at five ten five. Okay. Correct existing. So that would be changing it from five to fifty because it is three miles of trail. Because this is a it'd be the link. Yeah. I, I agree, actually, but again, I'm not sure what to use with the fifty. Right. Or the five hundred. Okay. Um parcel creates a link between undeveloped parcels totaling at least 20 acres. Again, I think yes for the 50 points. Um, so back to that last one. Oh. There was number 5,282 in a in a mile. So, so you can say 15,000. 15, okay. So we want to say 15,000 where which would be the 50 points. Okay. And then Thank we do you. five. I agree it should be 50. He had a question, I thought. Four is the fifteen thousand feet. So fifty points. It does, but the link already exists. Should should this count plus it counts? I think it should definitely count. Anytime we're adding words, because that linkage was across. You know, it's like in three directions. So I think it. Well, that's the beauty of this form is that it's additive. And that's yes. why when we started discussing simplifying this form, that was, I like the additive because it, for this very reason. <laughs> I think because it, it provides additional linkages doesn't mean it should be penalized because there are. <laughs> yeah. So yes, to the yeah, 50. Yeah. So that's correct. Uh, abuts six, abuts public or protected lands. So yes, with the 50. Uh, seven. Yes. Yes. Eight. Ma uh. So it. Okay. So is, is that a maximum of twenty points? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yes. Same with nine the maximum of 50. oh that's why so it's if it's a hundred foot buffer it gets twenty yes. points if it's two hundred fifty. Yeah, it added. gets another added to so 50. So, um, yes, and yes, 10 steep slopes. This isn't a particularly, this flat. is flat. So, that stays at zero. Um, so, we're moving on to three. Parcel provides public access. Uh, So I think that may, it will provide. So that stays at zero, right? Unless other land. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was thinking maybe the other land category. Yeah. yeah. And there'll be hunting access. But we already have access to those two. Oh, okay. So this, I, I read that as we don't have, a, there's a landlocked piece of property potentially, and we are gaining access through the park, so you're buying. Okay. That's how I read. Are you on, Are you doing this one right here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It does provide access to uh, uh, the river, river. Yes. So the stream. Yeah. Okay. And and the fishery. So, so 25. Yeah. So, so 127. 127 here. And then 25 here. 25 there. 127 oh, where? 120 here. Freshwater marsh. And the Upland river. river. So we're giving this 127 acres for a maximum of 25 points. Oh, yeah. Any other changes to three? That's 75 over here? Just from my own knowledge and past scoring, would you, does the whole, you give the whole parcel or is it the amount of acres that the river or lake or land holds? You know, if it was a 50 acre lake and the parcel was 300, you're only giving 50 acres, or you're giving a 300 acre score. Or a 50 acre lake, like are you talking about the resource or the parcel? parcel. Now, on how you've done it in the past, I think either way, in this case, you're gonna get the 25 points just for the future. Yeah, and number two, are we getting anything? Rick, do you remember? Uh, well, no, it's a tidal river. Oh, it's a tidal, and we don't have a tidal river, right. so just 25. Um, so, I think it's just 25. Uh, moving on to four, um, 
I agree that it's passive recreation potential in existing because with there's hunting and there's fishing and there's hiking and but not active like motorized vehicles. Uh, five community character. So it's currently getting maximum points for field or farmland and forest land. And then it's not currently a working forest, but it does have the field. Again, I have the same question when we review our next form. Yeah. Is it, is it, in this case, it's going to get 50 points no matter what because the way the split is, but and I'm making these number up, it's 100 acres of farmland and, and 27 acres of forest. Is that 100 and this 27? Or are you max propertying on both? I, I actually, we this one was really specific. I, this I do remember, what, the scenic roads. This is really about the road frontage to see those beautiful scenics. And we had the debate a long time ago about like, but the waterfall, that's beautiful scenic you have to walk into yeah. the property but the original this was really about Providing what we it. see on the roads gotcha um but i'm what i'm talking about is um, the seven right five yeah, two seven. and three. Oh, two and three. Two and three. Uh, on, oh, we in the yeah yeah like again i made up numbers 100 land acres of farmland and 20 of forest does one get 100 and one get 27 or do they both get 127 Oh, right. You know like, what I'm saying? Do we have to sp split it? I think oh, that's, do we go to that level of detail on this? I don't know. We've had a lot of discussions about <laughs> I think in this case, gonna, that's that's in long this long case it doesn't matter. They're going to get 50 because it's, right. we have enough acres yeah. to cover, but I think just for a future discussion. And then the, well, and the rural road corridor, they could possibly gain points on that as well. Yep. Okay. Um, which, I would actually argue that that actually should happen for however many acres are on that frontage or, you know, I don't know if it should be per hundred feet. See, it's per hundred feet. So whatever the frontage is on the, on the road. It's probably, if I had to make a, a, a guess, it would be two, maybe close to like maybe four or 500 feet. Over so it'd be four or five points. Okay, let's do five points. So five points. Okay. So, okay. and then lastly, public investment. I would give fifty points for the LMF, the likely LMF match. So which one does that go under? The part and grant and a three. Three. So that's the whole one from seven. 49 and then it should equal 50 points. Max point. This is going to rate higher than Libby River Fireland. Yeah, this is an make. amazing parcel. Yeah. This is really amazing. Okay, so now I can ask my question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> With your appraisal, uh -huh. did you guys, do you know if they did one of those, um, you know, buildable land? Did they do a scenario where where this is how many house lots could be? Because sometimes appraisals will, or appraisers will do that. Yeah, uh, he did not do that. <laughs> you <laughs> want to give that nice example, example, don't you? Tell them you're not approving them. You yeah, want them. They, they would typically do that, like if there's been an engineering study or okay. that type of thing, where or especially if the planning board has gotten involved. But at this stage, there wasn't. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to think, find a a good. I mean, recent study you could kind of figure this yourself 130 acres max of uh, uh take out the wetland or two acres take out the wetland. allow a certain amount of area for roads and wetlands and open space yeah uh, so something less than 50 units <laughs> probably guess about 35 units something as well to really try to bring play <laughs> okay. you can you can uh, the parcel that was being developed on proposed on Pine Point Road, which is um a 20 acre parcel that the development six acres of has 
13 months on it. It's in a different zoning district. So it's oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> two acres for yeah. Yeah, I think that one is a half acre or a third of an acre with the zoning. Yeah. Um so, so now if we had a cost of services, if we had a cost of services, Karen, we could say 35 units times what amount and what are we gonna save over every year? Right. Every year we will save this amount. So the cost of the bond is this much, but this we're that saving. Would, that would really be nice. Oh, I know. To have I think so. I do have the cost and benefit <laughs> of the new houses in Scarborough that was done in January 20, 2000 by the town. Yeah, so we have yeah. that. We have that. And in 2000, this number has to have gone up. It's 1800. The annual net fiscal impact for a single family subdivision. So per unit is negative $1,194. Yeah. That's the cost of the town for single One family year. homes. Oh, there's uh, so much more than that now. And that also doesn't impact. So open land in this is uh, adds $3 per acre to the town per year is positive. Uh, that is just considering the lack of services the town has to provide for that property. It does not include the ecological services that Wyoming provides the town. Like, for example, in this part of the town, if people's wells are either contaminated or dry up, and the town has to put in town sewer and water, right. what's the cost of that to the town? Uh, that's astronomical. Uh, so, you know, I mean, there is data out there. I think we can make a strong case. So, to how show. Is it, this hasn't been updated for 24 years. That's correct. Okay. We have active figures the, for the town. We have active figures mm -hmm. for the town for cost to serve, and I can, I'll get more info. It would be nice to have formula for us, I think. Is the, but you can kind of use that formula a little bit if you, they give the formula in there. Right. You can kind of use it, but. Right. And then, uh, based on recent numbers, I believe yeah. Doug Williams did an update specifically for the Pleasant Hills property. Yeah, I think he did too. Um, when that was uh, being considered for acquisition, but they actually had about 12 years later. But they actually did do how many exact houses were going to be on them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so someone want to make a motion? Well, wait a minute. I, I do one, one quick thing. I'll, I'll have to make a motion. If you can please go onto the spreadsheet on number 789, which is just, uh, just remove the comments on whoever's with this. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll clean it. We'll remove, clean it all, yes. remove all his comments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we. Wait. Can I ask sorry. one more question? Is this something that ha you have to close in a certain time? Because I haven't heard the time. Time frame on this property. So we are hoping to close, um, you know, within the next. I, I'm. I would like to see it closed like by the end of this year. So about six. It's going to work if we get awarded LMF. LMF has a process that has to go, we have to go through, and it's probably a minimum of six months. Um, you know, we do have the landowner is interested in closing on this sooner rather than later. Um, for I mean, there's a number of reasons. Um, but, um, you know, there are, um, Can yeah, you also remember so, the colors? so sooner rather than later, I'm hoping by the end of this year, probably, um, either that or the beginning early part of next year. Right, so I, I make a motion that we vote to approve spending, uh, uh bonding $800,000 for the purchase of the, sorry, it's like a little silver, uh, silver book. Two parcel. Second. Did I get that language correct? Eight hundred. That was eight hundred even right. Yep. At sixty-five Hanson Road. At sixty-five Hanson Road. I second. Discussion. All in favor? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I do have a discussion. I'm sorry. I know. I don't. I'm sorry. But I, um, this is a great parcel, and I think it's well worth it and I think it's going to be um but because this you know could close in the next year I'm a little bit concerned about us going through this in one meeting and going boom 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 for the reason that we are now 
um, do it in the public eye right now with all kinds of groups that are attending our meetings and watching on TV and it's watching the money or whatever. That was the reason why I asked the question was, is this, you know, have we done our due diligence? We haven't walked the property yet. Should we be doing that? I don't know. We haven't done that in a long, 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 long time. So, but this is a great parcel. I have no arguments about it. And I think it's it's well worth it. But um, I mean, I, I just throw that out to you. The uh, question I had is if this board recommends to council to approve it and they approve it and it takes an extended period of time to come through fruition. There's minimal funds left in the land bond. If something else comes in during that time frame, this board is tapped. Yeah. And yeah. so that's just a question about money management is how that works. With the exception of if they return three hundred and fifty thousand dollars from um, other element funds. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, if they do, yes. And if the um, fund twenty two from the oh. Sonic building is returning all good points. And then so in that situation, we would have Money return to the fund. Good point. Just want to make sure. I was more of a question then as far as things coming down. A the parcel of this out. size scoring this highly, we it's just so it's so rare yeah. that I worry if we, you know, try to conserve the last remaining funds, we could miss out on this opportunity. And you know, what are the what are the risks associated with that? Well, and and LMF will find out soon enough that right. if the council has approved it, and they'll be very happy to hear that. <laughs> right. So what happens if LMF doesn't approve at the six hundred fifty thousand? Uh, it's six hundred five. Six hundred five. Sorry, okay. and that's what's the number? Then we're going to have to look for alternative sources to raise that money to fill that gap. It's going to be hard. I mean, that's a lot of money uh, to raise. So we're really hoping for LMF. One of the things that um, the recommendation from your board today will really help with is that when I go to the LMF meeting to present to them, I can say that the town has taken the first step to approving this pro project. Um, you know, it hasn't been approved formally by the town council, but the Parks and Conservation Land Board has, a, has recommended it. Um, and that's going to carry a lot of weight with LMF to say that, yes, this project is ready to go. Um, it's going to score higher for them and much like a, a greater chance that they're going to approve that funding. So, you know, all these fund, all this funding ties together, just like you like to see, you know, that there's other funds available for match. They're going to want to see that as well. And, and having these secure, these properties. Um, what was their funding? Again? What was their appraised at again? I... One, uh, 1, 450000 Oh, it's right here. It's right here. I see. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think I'm going to offer a, an amendment, which is usually we say up to. I don't think uh, we don't usually stipulate the exact dollar value. We say you know up to or not to exceed um, eight hundred thousand. Can somebody second that? I'll second the amendment. Discussion. All those in favor? Of what? The amendment. The amendment. Of, of up to eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. And then all the original. In what the original, and we also always say, "What's the the covenants and restrictions as a?" Um. Yeah. Um. And that the town council protect all. I don't know. I don't have the wording. Usually, yeah. I have it sitting right here. No. But with our standard language on protections. I need to abstain from this because I have a relationship with the seller. But we, well, four would still. You still have a. We still, okay. All in favor? Four, excuse me. Thank you. Um, four, yes, one abstention. Which then leaves us about thirteen thousand dollars in depending uh, on the returns of funding is depending the returns uh, reimbursement of funds. Um and we're gonna hear or you're gonna hear I should say about the three hundred and fifty maybe in July was that my recollection for the oh, other property the reimbursement the reimbursement yeah. so um I did hear that as of yesterday 
um, we got notification from the Migratory Bird Conservation Commission who oversees those funds and that we were awarded funding for that project. So the, the, the application that we put in that will help support um, our 00 Gorm Road purchase, which we use town funding for, which is 130,000. And then it's another property that we are not asking the town for funding for. It's going to support a purchase of that property as well for 250,000. So we're getting $380,000. Now we still have to go through the process of getting that money, that funding released. This is just the award. So there's many steps we have to go through and we'd have to just see during that time frame, if for some reason the award gets reduced, um, then you know, we have to see how much we're gonna actually get from them of that award amount. And then once I know more information about that, then I'd be able to come back to the town and say, this is the amount that we're able to give back. So. So that was just for the 00 Gorm Road, the other property that we also have an application in through NACA um, was for the 350,000. And that one, I think they'll be, have a decision this July. So when I hear from that application, um, I'll let you know as well. Did you vote on the main vote? <laughs> just the amendment. We voted on both. We put it on. We we did, we did, we did. Oh. You, you yeah. the amendment. Now you have to do, now the, now you have to do the motion as amended. <laughs> motion as amended. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, I have to abstain. Four with one abstention. Motion to adjourn? Some of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We knew this was going to be a marathon. Yeah, I got to stop recording. Stop, stop recording. Here. Um, and then we we didn't get to all of our items. So if folks have additional agenda, uh, so we have a 